Today we're going to look at the seventh grade formula sheet and I'm going to model for you how you should write to the text for a formula sheet. It's important that you understand on the formula sheet what the variables stand for and what's available to you to help you on the test. So I'm just going to start up at the very top with a square and begin writing as I would as I would think or, um, in interacting with this formula sheet. First object here is a square. This next one is a rectangle. Next one is a parallelogram. Next one is a trapezoid. We have a triangle. There's a circle. There's a cube. This is a rectangular prism, so abbreviate that RP. This one's a cylinder. And this one is a pyramid. Now I'll go back to the first object here. It's two-dimensional, a square. I know that it has four equal sides. I know that this little right angle means it's 90 degrees. And there's a formula over to the right that says A. A stands for the area, and that is equal to the side times the side. The second one is a rectangle. They have a variable of P there, which stands for perimeter which I really don't need a formula for a perimeter. All I have to do for a perimeter is add up the numbers around the rim of the shape, and that will give me the perimeter. But in this case, they took the length twice and the width twice because that will give me all the sides. A is again for area, so area is equal to the length times the width. The next shape is a parallelogram. A parallelogram has two sets of parallel lines. The top and bottom are parallel and the two sides are parallel. The formula again is A for area and it says B and H. The B stands for the base and the H stands for the height. You have to be careful when finding the height because the height is always going to be perpendicular to your base. So you got to look for that right angle. It's not the slant height. This is not my H. My height is right here. It's the perpendicular line to my base. And that's always going to be true as we go down through these different shapes. Your height always has to be perpendicular to your base. Next shape is a parallelogram, I mean a um, trapezoid. And the top and the bottom are parallel. Those are called your bases, A and B. And in this formula, we're trying to find the area the area is equal to the height, h. Take the height and divide it by 2. My height, again, is right here. It's perpendicular to my base, so I would take my height, divide it by 2, and then there's parentheses, which means that I have to multiply half the height, and I have to multiply that by my two bases, their lengths added together. So it's like having base a plus base B, whatever that is, is going to be multiplied by half my height. The next one, a triangle. Again, it has a B and an H for base and the height. This triangle is really like half of a rectangle. If I was to take these two sides and flip them over, it would take two of these triangles to make that rectangle. B times H is just like taking a width times a length, but for triangle, it's always half of it. So to find the area of a triangle, it's always to take half of the base times the height. Or it's half, the formula is really half of a rectangle. The circle, we can see that there is an R that represents the length from the center to the outside edge of the circle. That is called our radius. And we can find C, which stands for circumference by taking 2 times pi, which is 3.14, times our radius. I also know that circumference is equal to the diameter times pi, because the diameter is the same thing as 2 times r. A stands for area again. Pi is 3.14 times the radius squared, which means radius times radius. Or you just take that number, square it, times pi. The next shape is three-dimensional. And you see that there is a variable of s, s, and 
S, that means all those side lengths are the same. So to find the volume, all I have to do is to multiply those three things together. The V stands for volume. It's equal to side times side times side. Volume means the number of cubes that it takes to fill up an object. That's what volume means. The number of cubes to fill it up. The next shape is a rectangular prism. Again, we're finding the volume. In this case, though, my variables are L, W, and H. So that is the length times the width times the height. It's similar to the cube in that we're taking the three dimensions and multiplying them together, but a cube has all the same measurement. Rectangular prism does not necessarily. And again, volume is the number of cubes that it takes to fill it up on the inside. And our units are cubed. Example like centimeters cubed, inches cubed, feet cubed, it could be miles cubed, but your units should be cubed. A cylinder is the next object. V stands for volume again. Pi is equal to 3.14 times my radius squared times my height. Notice that the first part of this formula, pi r squared, that's how you find area of a circle. This part right here, the pi r squared, really finds the area at the bottom. And then when I multiply that by the height, it's like stacking this on top of itself, like CDs, and to where you would fill that entirely up. That's how you get the volume. So the formula is really the area of a circle, whatever that bottom circle would be, times the height, how many of those circles are stacked on each other. The last one here is a pyramid. The formula says we're going to take one-third of the area of the base. This base is a square. It's drawn in a, in a way to illustrate a pyramid, but the base is really a square. So that's like saying side times side in this case. So we're going to take one-third. It's going to be multiplied by the area of the base times the height. Multiplying by a third is the same thing as dividing by three. Multiplying by a half for this triangle is the same thing as dividing by two. Now for the next section, we are giving different conversions. The top part, these are for measuring length. We have one pound equal to 16 ounces. That is going to be for measuring mass. Then we have the next group is for measuring volume. Gallons, quarts, pints, cups. Then we have days, hours, and minutes for measuring time in the customary system. And the last section is all for metric conversions. And with metric conversions, we also have units of measure for length, mass, and volume. And this chart, we can put right behind meter this is also true if we were talking about liters or if we were talking about grams. What changes is the prefixes. The prefix will change as we are converting, but it's the same thing if it, as if it was liters or grams.